I think it's Sonia. Yeah. Okay. It's uh, amazing. Hi. Hello. Okay. Hello. Go ahead, please. Hi. Can you hear me okay? Yep. Yes. We can hear you. Uh, really interesting. Uh, um, and uh, it's, it, uh, um, I like the idea of including religion in, um, in, your, in your model. Um, and I was wondering, um, you sort of you quickly passed uh, on the relationship between Christianity and not. And I was wondering if uh, um, I, I really didn't, I, I didn't look properly at your, li or your list of countries. So I don't know if Christianity is the prevalent religion in the countries you study or not. And if you didn't, uh, is there a relationship between non-Christian countries or, or not? And are you planning to do any follow-up on that? Is, is it interesting and it relates to my own research as well? So thank you. And I, I, might, I might point you for, uh, for some literature on that. Mm -hmm. Please, Roman. <laughs> okay, uh, Sonia, uh, thank you very much for your question. So uh, regarding the variable uh, of religion, um, in this study, uh, what we did is uh, uh, we measure uh, uh, religion in a different manner than in other than the other kind of studies that include religion, which means that this variable is not a dichotomic variable, which means zero or one. Uh, what we did is uh, uh, to use a, a continuous variable, and uh, what we did in the, our research is to measure the length of the uh, Christian Christianity period for each country. So, um, uh, so in that case, uh, uh, we want to see uh, the impact of the leg of uh, Christianity, the impact on social entrepreneurship. Uh, so, we don't have a, a kind of measure uh, if this uh, country or the country has a prevalence of Christianity as a religion. Of this is the 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 the, the first, I mean, option as a belief, I don't know, but uh, we use uh, like a continuous variable and we want to see how the lack of Christianity period affect uh, the social entrepreneurship rate. So, and we found that there is a positive correlation between two, those variables. Um, I'd like to share a practitioner uh, note with you. Uh, I used to work in the UK as a social entrepreneur and it's almost anecdotic, but I did experience a lot of religious groups that sort of where um, jumping on the wagon of social enterprise as to sort of um, clean themselves from a religious code, let's say. So because it wasn't accepted so much to do something in the name of religion, but it was accepted to do it in the name of social enterprise. Um, and this is completely anecdotic and I have no empirical data or anything, um, but I, because it's in your model, I, I yeah, but. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's uh, thank you for, that, uh, for sharing. Yeah, thank you for sharing that uh, uh, the, 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 the experience and the case. And um, well, I just want to add that um, uh, the variable uh, is not mean that you need to be a religious person to be uh, to be a social entrepreneur. Uh, it's more related with the, the values that are inside uh, is the religion. Okay, and. Uh, Perhaps uh, what we can found in this uh, research is that there is a kind of path dependency, which means that uh, perhaps uh, because of the values that are embedded in some religions, enhance some values that can enhance and can uh, predict uh, the behavior of people regarding social entrepreneurship. Right? So, uh, uh, and we just uh, take uh, the variable of the concept of Christianity as a proxy of a religion. Because we see that could be like a natural experiment on history, and uh, this variable is important. We think at the same time because it's some like an exogenous variable, and uh, that makes strong the model because we can talk about some causality and not just um, a correlation. So, um, yeah. Thank you anyway for the hints. And okay, is there any other question? Roma? Yeah, I, I just wanted uh, you to elaborate a little bit more about uh, uh, informal and formal institutions. Uh, it was uh, not really clear for me. Could you elaborate a little bit on more, on, more on this? Uh, 
these two types of uh, institutions, informal and formal institutions, uh, in your okay. study? Yeah. yeah, thank you very much, Edgar. Um, well, uh, according to, uh, to the work of uh, Douglas North, uh, he stated that uh, the performance of uh, the economic performance uh, of uh, any country, uh, it's related to, uh, to the rules, to, to institutions. Uh, so institutions uh, provide incentives uh, for the behavior of uh, people and uh, for the way that uh, the political and the economic and social uh, interactions uh, while performing in, in a country. So um, uh, there are different kinds of in incentives and the incentives can come from uh, a formal institution, which are the law uh, constitutions. Uh, the way that, uh, that you regulate the country, this is the, the rule of the game. So uh, this is the way that uh, the people, uh, the way that you incentives people to behave. And there is another uh, source of incentive, which is uh, uh, the informal uh, institutions, which are related with the code of conduct, more related with values, with personal values, with code of ethics, uh, that at the same time, these are a source of incentives, that are a source of the way that the people will interact with each other. Uh, these are their internal restriction, uh, the way that uh, yeah, we see the world, the way that we interact with the world, with the people. Uh, so um, um, this is why I understood about uh, uh, the concept of uh, formal inform institution according to Douglas North. Yeah, I think it's important that informal institutions, I mean, this kind, this, uh, these relationships, uh, this inter interaction between the different actors and with the social entrepreneurs, I think it's very important uh, for entrepreneurship in general. Thank you, Rommel. And uh, uh, we uh, finished this presentation. Where if there is no other question, Okay, thank you very uh, much. then thank you. Thank you, Romel. Uh, we'll continue with the next one. Uh, so it's um, of Carlos, uh, David Martinez, and uh, Jaime Manuel Mora. Uh, they will present financial literacy with families, opportunity for social entrepreneurship. Please go ahead with this presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Edgar and organizers. We're very glad to share this space with you. Uh, I will introduce my partner, the main researcher, Jaime Manuel Mora Cruz. He's going to tell us something in Spanish. So, bienvenido, Profesor Jaime. Muchas gracias a todos y cada uno de ustedes. Es una breve introducción. Eh, simplemente para contextualizarles, eh, actualmente nosotros adelantamos un proyecto que se llama Proyecto de Educación Financiera para el Hogar. Este proyecto lo que busca es fortalecer las competencias financieras de nuestra población objetiva. Nosotros, fruto de un estudio y una investigación, identificamos que nuestra población estaba sufriendo de un endeudamiento y sobreendeudamiento. Y nuestro deber social y moral era hacernos partícipes, no, no quedarnos cruzados de manos y poner lo, los dones y talentos que tenemos al servicio de una sociedad. Les dejo con, en manos de mi profe Carlos, de mi compañero, de mi partner, para que ya les contextualicen. Discúlpeme que les haya abordado en in my language materna. Well, thank you, teacher Jaime. I want to confirm with you. I want to check if you are able to see, to watch my screen. Yes, it's well, okay. Thank you. So we want to share with you the experience in Colombia, in Bogota, about financial literacy with families, an opportunity for social entrepreneurship. So, in recent years, families' financial literacy has become an issue in many countries. One of these issues is related with how many young adults 
especially lack financial literacy. We can find financial literacy as a financial knowledge that allows individuals to make educated financial decisions, including the ability or the skills to distinguish financial choices, discuss about money, understand financial issues, and plan for the future, according to Valentin, Kajun, Johnson, and Cherony. The Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development defines financial literacy as the process by financial products, consumers, and investors improve their understanding of concepts and products, developing skills to be more aware of financial risks, opportunities, make informed decisions, and other effective choices to improve their financial well-being. In other hand, financial inclusion includes the access and use of financial services under appropriate regulation that guarantees consumer protection, scams, and promotes financial education to improve the financial capabilities of all segments of population. We believe that financial education, that a financial literacy improves the ability to save and promote social entrepreneurship. The concept of financial education or financial literacy can be categorized in different fields. For example, in the framework of formal education or scholar education, either in regular or elective standardized courses in study plans at basic, secondary, middle, or higher education levels, or in academic studies developed by higher education institutions, even in social activities. It is also possible to categorize as an informa an, a sort of informal financial education efforts made by government institutions, through propaganda campaigns, for example, massively promoting convenient financial habits, or information, education, and communication, a concept extended in technical settings for the development of public policies in Latin America. Another kind of informal financial education for can be found in the actions carried out by banks, which may have a the purpose of branding or marketing, whatever you want to name it, as well as a sort of nature associated with corporate social responsibility that applies to this type of companies. But maybe it's easy to predict that the emphasis will be on banking rather than on the well-being of customers. I'll talk banks can sometimes win from users a lack of knowledge in relation to their financial management if we start with the assumption that ignorance leads to higher levels of debt, it's also valid to affirm that healthy financial habits can lead to a greater capacity to save, which can also improve the profitability interests of banks. According to Kalamato, while Americans' personal savings rate is alarming low points, American credit card balance are increasing significantly. Maybe this is changing right now with this coronavirus crisis, but in starting the 21st century, according to the Federal Reserve in 2006, America's total credit card debt was over 900 billion. College students who usually have little knowledge about how to make wise consumption decisions are particularly at risk of becoming the target of credit card companies and other kind of retailers, according to Joe Johnson and Sheridan. 
following Kalamato, considering that the average student graduates from high school without learning the fundamental skills to manage personal financial affairs, financial literacy is an important topic that needs to be addressed earlier in life. Living in a, socia in a society that equates personal accomplishment with material success and that emphasizes instant material gratification over safe spending makes the issue of financial literacy even more relevant. Well, in the context of Colombia and in our university, as a relevant precedent, a relevant background, is the research developed by Professor, by the teacher and researcher, Jaime Manuel Mora Cruz. In 2018, he advanced a characterization of the student population of the faculty of Economic and Administrative Science in Agustiniana University in Bogota, Colombia. It identified that more than 47% of the students say that their income reached to cover their obligations, while 52% consider that that wasn't their case. They also identified that 60% of the population has an economic dependent. Well, in this research, we use a critical theory perspective as a basis with the goal of providing the space for marginalized groups to be concretely, critically aware of their true situation intervene in its reality and take charge of their destiny. Considering Kalamata's research consistent with the social learning approach, which states that children's behavior and attitudes are shaped by parents who transmit norms and social values to their kids. Previous research found that children learn consumer behavior from their parents who are the most important agent of socialization. In this research, we hypothesize too that parental involvement, defined as parents' support and commitment to pass financial knowledge to their children, results in an increase of children's level of financial literacy, controlling. For this research, we analyze the importance of early financial education, participatory learning, parental involvement, demographic considerations, and national strategies. As case studies in USA, United Kingdom, Hungary, Czech Republic, Poland, Romania, Bulgaria, Lithuania, New Zealand, Australia, Mexico, and Colombia. In the Colombian case, especially, the Universitaria Agustiniana experience in Bogota. Well, we consider issues related with financial responsibility and decision making, credit and debt, risk management, insurance, saving and investing, social entrepreneurship, paying for college, income, financial planning and money management on buying and taxes, among other important topics related with financial literacy with family, especially in crisis times. Well, in fact, economic emergencies generated for coronavirus are relevant issues nowadays. There are many differences between South America and especially in Colombia and other countries about unemployment benefits. Context and demographic issues may be involved for, to set critical variables in financial literacy and educational process. Well, although there are important cases of financial literacy from banks' initiatives, initiatives may be a mistake to relay on banks to deliver part of 
children's financial education, according with many authors. Banks are business with best interested in the spending, saving, and investing decisions young people will make. For example, Australian researchers underline that banks are not independent educators, of course. Banks make the bulk of their profit from lending. Shareholders demand profit world, and so banks meet their fiduciary duties by lending as much as they can within the boundaries of some risk management and legal governance. For this reason, going to a bank for financial advice is essentially asking to be advised to either put your money in savings. Some corporate social responsibility programs for banks in America Latina and Latin America involve financial literacy, but banks watch children in their school banking programs so they will be the preferred provider when the children are old enough to apply for a loan. Banks are not institutions to turn to for independent and based financial education. So, it's very important what university, college, and schools and formal education or scholar education can do to improve financial literacy in young population and its families in large. In the Colombian context, Ready Brun Itan defined that 88% of Colombian of Colombians express concerns about having to face higher expenses in the future, which can be related with low levels of financial planning. And additionally, they found that one in five could face significant unexpected expenses. 81% of the population is unable to calculate a simple interest rate. 45% of the population does not use financial products. 72% do not have a saving product. And 65% of Colombia population states that they do not have enough money to cover basic expenses. Well, Universitaria Agustiniana, Agustinian University is located in Bogotá, in Colombia. In the, edu in the institutional educational project of the university in Colombia, it's highlighted as part of its identity that the educational apostolate of the order or Agustinian. One more place. minute. How many? How, okay. One, one minute. One, one minute. Okay, thank you. So, in the case of Universitaria Agustinian experience in financial literacy with families involves somebody mute me. Can you hear me? Okay, can you hear me well? Yes, go ahead. Okay, thank you. So, finishing, Universitaria Agustinian experience in financial literacy with family involves education process with students and their parents with massive activities with a basic language, humor, and practical advice. So, concluding, So finishing right now, the experiences of Agustiniano University in the development of financial education program allowed an efficient integration of training and education, research and social actions with the participation of teachers, students and their families. So even when there's a natural link between greater financial knowledge and better decisions in the matter, studies that provide evidence of causality are scarce. However, the literature tends to assume that more 
knowledge leads to better results, and that they consist specifically in an increase in saving, greater accumulation of wealth, a lower default rate in repayment, in the repayment of mortgage loans, and with a reduction in debt. We believe that financial education, financial literacy, improves the ability to save and promote social entrepreneurship, especially in times of crisis as we are living nowadays. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Carlos. Uh, now is the time for some uh, questions. Uh, if somebody has any question, please raise it. A question? Okay, um, I, I just have a, a question. Uh, so you mentioned that you are um, uh, having this uh, kind of uh, um, uh, preparation for uh, so people can raise their literacy in financial terms. Uh, uh, how, I mean, how long have been uh, uh, in place uh, this kind of uh, initiative at the university. Thank you, Edgar. Uh, the teacher Jaime Mora, Jaime Manuel Mora Cruz, is the main researcher. He started working this two years ago, and especially on 2019, he made uh, many conferences, many lectures, and more than uh, one 1,800 of people were benefited with this training. He made lectures and he used to involve um, personal tips, uh, even didactics, even pedagogy with humor as a sort of stand-up comedy, for example, with a with a simple with with a simple language, with a basic language, if you if you want, no. And uh, now, right now, uh, because uh, coronavirus issues, we had to involve uh, many digital, many digital experience to engage to engage people, you no, know, and to keep and to keep the project running on. So, uh, a teacher and researcher Jaime Manuel Mora Cruz has been working around two years, especially last year, we uh, had a, a great impact. And this year we have been uh, working on. Oh, thank you, Carlos. If there is no more questions, uh, I will uh, continue with the next presentation. Thank you again, Carlos. Thank you, Edgar, and thank you all. Okay, next uh, will be uh, Raquel uh, Antolin, 